Today's episode of My Worst Date is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash date. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Cheers! Keegan, yes. I need you to say what you just said. Okay. All right. I do uh, only because I feel like this needs to get out into the world. Yes. This so is that the important. We as women can come together <laughs> and and stand for this. So we were talking about Moby continuing to be just a piece of shit ass hat. Right. And then you brought up that he's like a huge like man whore. He's, yeah. You know, sticks yeah, around yeah. a lot. And how? How? And I how? Mean, I mean, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. And. He's such a piece of shit. And you were like, we just need to stop fucking musicians. And I was like, we need to just stop fucking assholes. Like, if women could just come together and put, like, a pussy embargo yeah. on, <laughs> like, <laughs> on that. And we say, until you act right, you don't get yes. any from yes, anybody. No. Yes. If you send shitty Twitter messages, if yeah. you're mean to your Tinder date, That's none. That's sister solidarity You don't right get there. any. Yeah, we band together and say, you don't get laid until you become a better person. And now, how does this message Pussy come out? Embargo. Is this like an Amber Alert situation yes. <laughs> where it like comes up on your phone? There needs to be an underground and network of women. It's beep, like beep, 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 Frank, beep, 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 beep. comma, 46, <laughs> San Jose, California, doesn't Pussy tip embargo. his waitress. Exactly. Pussy embargo. That's <laughs> exactly. Uh, waiter. Right. I need Black Mirror to do this episode. I, I need them to like come up with the technology because I'm sure it exists. I'm sure we can make it happen. Well, and here's yeah. the thing. Our gene pool would be a lot better for it. <laughs> because if we And stopped, people would start acting right. And people, people would start. There's a motivator for people to stop acting like pieces of shit. Yes. And then also, you wouldn't be having the kids of these piece of shit people. Yeah. And so hopefully the gene pool is cleaner. I think, you, could, saying. I think yeah. you just really like solved a lot of world problems. How do we make it happen? <laughs> <laughs> I like all of this. Yeah. I'm, do I we have any that. entrepreneurs that listen? Because oh, can honestly, we make an app for this? Elon Musk, contact us. <laughs> no, he's on the list. He oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. I just got That's, that alert the other day. Yeah. What can we call it? So it's got to be something alert. Who knows, Grimes? Let's call it a Moby alert. Someone made a Moby alert. <laughs> Moby alert. <laughs> <The> Moby alarm. <laughs> Is so funny. Shut Ar- down, Ke- the sir. R. Kelly alert. Oh, you Jesus. have been shut down. Yeah. Sorry, oh. pussy embargo. You're like, oh, I was kind of. <laughs> if oh, that's not the name I'm of this sorry. fucking episode, <laughs> I know. I'm flipping this table. I think I'm Prince not... wrote a song about it. Pussy embargo. Yeah, I think it's pussy control. But yeah, same thing. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Like bitches, get it together. Yeah. Pussy control. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, how much do we all love Prince? Ugh. Oh, we all. You know love what? Prince. I said to Chris the other day. I'm like. Thank fucking God we've not had anything come out about Prince because oh, I, I don't know if I can handle it. No, can I, handle I cannot. It. Yeah. In fact, Couldn't. all the things that have come out since he passed are like amazing. great things. Yeah. yeah. How amazing. Because wasn't he like a Jehovah's Witness? So yeah. he couldn't tell anybody about all the, all the nice like things, things that he did. Philanthropic things that he was doing <laughs> yeah. when he was alive. So he died and they're like, oh, he was giving like half of his fucking salary to charity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all like, his money oh, away. He's oh, the best. What a great guy. There's a oh. short list of people who I'm like, if anything ever fucking comes out about Tom these people. Hanks. Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. I was my number one. Mr. Rogers. Oh, my <gasps> God. Are we going to fuck Mary Carol Prince? No. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Oh my he god, did you never. just make the most impossible fuck Mary Kill oh. of all time? Oh. Yep. Prince, Mr. Rogers, and Tom Hanks. I don't like that. Well, uh, actually, I know I exactly I what it. I would do. <laughs> oh no. You guys, but no, 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 no. It think has about to be it. fuck Mary Friend. Okay. Right? No, we're <gasps> no. going all in Ooh. because you know why? This is the one year oh. anniversary episode oh, it hurts. Bow, 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 of yeah. My Worst Date. I'm Christina. <gasps> I'm Cassie. And I'm Keegan. Hi. Hi. Welcome, oh, everyone. First and off. foremost, God bless America. <laughs> I can't believe, A, that we've been doing this for a year. Yeah. B, I can't fucking believe how amazing. I, we've said it before. I know it gets old. I can't help it. 
how fucking amazing our listeners are Mm -hmm. how fucking amazing it is that we're still doing this after a year and that we've gotten the support (laughs) and i mean it's it's been fucking truly amazing yeah Yeah. just um and we got good things coming around yeah we do coming around the bend yeah because stuff looks like we might be going to vegas yeah yeah maybe we'll, uh, yeah. hopefully we'll, uh, more more on that more later yeah. but we're still working out the deets but yeah. we are hoping to expand our live show audience yes uh, in the next year so very yeah. exciting maybe very coming exciting. to a town near you and you know glad to officially announce that after one year of bad dates <laughs> i am Still single. <laughs> uh, we do this for you guys. We, we do, do it for you. for you. I had a couple people that were like uh, trying to date me, and I was like, "No, with great power comes great responsibility." Yeah. I and must I continue the slow, solo journey <laughs> to continue yeah. going and having bad dates so that yes. I can entertain people and no report back yeah. never never come close in an entire year not even you not a couple, even close. Yeah, a couple you, strong you had, candidates yeah a couple close calls i feel like hmm. kind of yeah. yeah yeah i feel like there were a couple times we, we can rewind the tape yeah. on our episodes i feel like there were a couple oh times where God. you were like maybe oh i know <laughs> i know there were times my hopes were up hopes were high yeah, things things were in motion and then the red flags came a flying pew pew Dude. Yeah. yep for real though too because i mean i feel like people listening could sometimes be like maybe she's just being too picky and i'm like no these red flags oh, yeah. were like they were they were flags, like, deal breakers like, which we talked about yes. we need to do let's update them updated deal yeah. breakers i don't even remember what my oh, last i know what were. mine is as i look at my ohio state uh yeah i her. remember you because mine was and and here's what i was i was thought actually thought about it recently because i knew we were coming up on our year episode one year episode and i was like it's still to me would a hundred percent be a deal breaker. Like I legitimately it's just, and you know why it's just because look, and I have, and I've said this before. I said this on the episode we talked about this on. I love the rivalry. You're too, you're too I love the rivalry. I am. I'm too competitive. It would literally be a house divided in the strongest way possible if that was the case. And mm-hmm. I just, to me like there's a lot of things i could disagree on we don't have to have the same baseball team we don't have to have the same but to me like college football is just such a big part of like going out on a date actually yeah. tomorrow with a guy that went to michigan he's he's like oh i'm supposed to tell you ohio like boo and i'm like oh but he, okay. that means he don't care that much yeah, yeah. he doesn't so care fine. that much and neither do I. but that's that's why deal breakers like we talk about it it's got to be like it's a personal, personal thing. yeah yeah personal it, thing. because it in my mind even if he said that i'd be like yeah no this probably isn't gonna work out and would cancel the date because <laughs> it's still a strong deal yeah, unmatch unmatch like... block <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i don't know i i thought about that the reason why i thought about like updating our deal breakers is because i look back on mine and i'm like loud chewers slow walkers and like while mm. those things slow walkers still st- like y'all pick up the pace seriously yeah, let's get i cannot going. handle it and loud chewers still don't like them but like given everything we have discussed in the past year correct i'm, I'm like i'll give me a loud chewer but over please some of don't this live other with your mom shit. Yes. like <laughs> yeah over some of this other shit. Like, please just don't be a bigot. Like, that would be yeah. my yeah. number one deal breaker. I'm yeah. just like, if you say anything remotely bigoted in our conversation, yeah. Yeah. we are done here. You're so fucking <laughs> We are so here. fucking done. It's not something I'm willing to train you on. It's 2019. Get your shit together. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's absolutely right. Well, I have learned the thing, I guess, that drives me the most crazy that gets under my skin. I'm really busy, and I... Go, go, go. But my phone is constantly attached to me and I'm a very communicative person. So being ignored drives me bananas. Now, I'm not saying you don't text me back right away because I don't text people back right away sometimes. Right. Nah, exactly. You're in a meeting or you're busy or whatever. But if I text you a question because we have plans like later in the day and – I don't hear from you. And then I'm thinking, do we have plans later in the Mm. day? And then I see you posting Mm. on other social media. So I'm like, okay, so motherfucker, I know you on your phone. And you you got it. Deliberately 
ignoring ignoring a question posed of you. This isn't me just sending you something that's rhetorical right. that you don't have. Well, that I'll tell drives you, even, me. Even when you but do. Man, no, Sam, which. I will tell you guys, like sometimes I'm bad about like, I'll wake up, I'll read my text message from the My Worst Date text message chat. Yeah. Then I'll go back to sleep. Yep. Then I will wake up and like like stuff on mm-hmm. like Facebook and Instagram. And then I'll realize that I liked like a My Worst Date thing. And then I'm like, oh shit. I just like that. So they know I'm on my phone and I did not respond <laughs> to the My Worst Date <laughs> chat. Keegan. And I'm like, oh shit. You, I better like go respond to them now <laughs> for that. For that. I've but literally for never that noticed reason. you do that, by the way. I mean, never. I'm just saying, I'm hyper aware of that stuff because I'm just like, that is the case. It's like we live yeah. in a world now where like, we can see each other's activity for better or for worse. Right. And like, yeah, if I send you a fucking question that I need answered. Right. And yeah. you are on Instagram. You're on your God. Respe- blessed phone. Respect my fucking time. Respect my time. I my time is so fucking valuable. Just respect my time. That's, that's all I'm saying. Also, like we talked, uh, I think, on the shorty about like people that are are creative is important to me for someone to have hobbies it doesn't necessarily have to be creative per se but just like do something for me i need to have somebody that has more in their life than than just a job and like netflix you know like i i need somebody that's passionate about something um because i don't do small talk that well you know i get so fucking bored where it's just like oh how was your day yeah how was your day I remember when I first met Chris when we first started dating and thinking, oh my God, what if on like the third date we have nothing else to talk about? Like, like what if we've already mm-hmm. said everything and we're like bored now? Like, you know what I mean? I, I think everybody feels think that way. That. I think that yeah. with new friends more than I think yeah. that even with like guys. Like yeah. I think that with girls, I don't know why, like I feel like the bar is higher for girls for like friendships for girlfriends for like girlfriends where I'm like I don't want to run out of things to say (laughs) I don't want her to think I'm not cool I can't believe we still have stuff to say after a year that's a good sign truly what a year we had our first live show yeah can we talk about that two nights it was good two nights live show two good nights fucking great Chris still talks about it. He's like, dude, your shows were so good. (gasps) Thank you. It was so much. It was fun. (laughs) Yeah. Can't wait for our next one. Yeah. Do you have any updated deal breakers? Oh, updated deal breakers. Let's see. I do agree. I think that being communicative is super important, which you know we talked about before. Mm-hmm. Um, in anything from any stories or or God, my experience, that's the thing is like, where do you narrow it down? There's so exactly. many. I mean, there are so many. There's so I thought many. about well, another one. But you know what? I'll randomly think of them while I'm driving, and then yeah, I forget. Like, that ain't right. working. What about green flags? Let's flip the script. Okay. Oh, okay. What are the signs that you would get on a first date where you'd be like, yeah, I like this person. Green flag. You may proceed. Okay. I think that, well, I, <laughs> you're going to hate me <laughs> because this legitimately goes back to my green flag with Chris, which was our very first conversation. I paid him. Okay. This is how long ago this was. I paid him with a check for him to do my headshots for me. And our conversation started because my checks were blue jackets. Columbus Blue Jackets hockey team were like what was on my checks. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you're like Blue Jackets. I'm like, fuck yeah. And I'm like, so we started, started talking about sports. To me, if we can really go head to head on sports and have like a really awesome conversation, like for me, like there's just something about a connect like that where you're just like hitting all the right buttons. Like I, to me, that's I feel like, like that uh, with music. Yeah. So it's like yeah. being able to like really go toe to toe on a shared interest. Yes. That is like a green flag. Huge green you. flag. Well, cause I think that just as much as they're deal, deal breakers, it's also the greenest of green flags when mm-hmm. you're like, Oh, we see eye to eye on this. The funny thing is, is that I would have said probably music as well, but Chris and I have a very odd, um, I, he brings things to me that I would have maybe never appreciated before, but there's, there's actually a lot of things that like, he is more into jazz. I can't stand jazz music. I like blues and he's like, give or take blues. Why not both? (laughs) Yeah. And I just, I don't like jazz. I just have never enjoyed it. It's not something I feel it makes actually gives me a little bit of anxiety, like certain types of jazz, um, where he's like just really into it. And, and, but though I've been introduced to certain jazz too, that like now I'm like, Oh, okay. I can, I can dig that thing. I can dig this particular thing or whatever. Yeah. And 
So I would say that we don't, we have a lot of places that cross. Yeah. Like usually it's heavy metal. The funny thing is, is we, we are very yin and yang when it comes to music. He's jazz. I'm blues. He's heavy metal. I'm punk. He, he's more, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's more, there's different, like but we, you respect his knowledge on the topic 100%. and he's able to communicate it in a way that it's fun to talk with him it's about it. Complimentary, not identical. But I think that that's where with me, music, it's funny how music almost became such a secondary to me where sports is kind of more our primary. Mm. And I, it's just, it's such a silly thing. I, I, I guess I, there's part of me too that didn't realize like how much I loved sports until I met Chris and how, like how much, like I just really fucking enjoy it. And I have no apologies to make about it at all. I just, I know it's not very, it's like the opposite. And I, I can literally never talk to sports about with you guys about any, but I mean, literally he's yeah. the guy who, I worked one weekend and I didn't get to see an Ohio State game. I came in the door and I'm telling you maybe one of the sexiest things he's ever done is like had it on pause. The like the rundown from Sports Center paused on our game. Like, are you ready for the update? Like I was like, Oh, this is hot. Yeah. I've been really trying, baby. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, take your clothes off right now. <laughs> It's so stupid, like, right? I'm sorry. No, I'm I don't think angry. it's. I don't no, think it's, stupid. it's like I don't think it's dumb or weird. Everybody's got their their thing because, like, to me, I'm like I watch like crazy ass like Nova documentaries and stuff about about science and about like weird. I love these weird quantum physics theories and yeah. stuff like that. So being able to talk to somebody about Bostrom or kind of crazy stuff like that, like I don't talk to our friend group about that, but it would be very much a green flag for me to to talk about that kind of stuff with a date who would be able to hold their own. And, to understand yeah. what the word Bostrom theory means. <laughs> I think that that's a very typical thing. I mean, I think we like... We all have our thing. Yeah. And like, any, What's your thing with Anthony? Especially anytime you have a thing that's like you know a lot about a topic. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk to other people about that topic, especially if it's something that's kind of like niche or you don't get that filled other places. Yeah. Now, I would say my green flag t- is... Politics. Ha- <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know because... Activism. I could, I could probably run somebody over with that. And that's... <laughs> that's that, I don't know that that would end well <laughs> on a first date if I was single. I would not pull out the big guns on a first date yeah. unless you started saying some problematic shit and then i will take you to task and then unfriend you or yes. unmatch you but but on the other side though what if they came to you correct oh sure sure yeah, and yeah, that, yeah wouldn't yeah. that be hot that'd be that, kind of a turn that'd be like a sure. green flag yeah, yeah if like, we had a lot we could discuss uh yes absolutely we're like do you want to talk uh 2020 primary candidates i'm like yes i would <laughs> yes i would <laughs> and how uh, I, I'll, I'll take a refill later thank you very much um, <laughs> <laughs> snap 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 but then, if, snap, but then right? if he snapped at the then if he snapped at the waiter i'd be like we're done here oh, no, <laughs> never mind i don't i don't care that we have the same pick for the 2020 election um but i would say For me, the biggest thing that I need in a relationship is like I need somebody who is going to make me laugh. Like I need it because like I think I can get really introspective. Like I I think I'm a funny person, but I think I can get really introspective. Mm -hmm. I think that I sometimes don't lighten things as much as they should be. And I need that. Like I need somebody right. who's going to pull me back to like right. make me laugh about something stupid. It's really like important yeah, to yeah. me. Um, So that would be my number one. Like if I was dating, it's just like, can you make me laugh on this date? Because if it's all just, even if we're talking about something I'm interested in, if it's all just dry conversation, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I can't. Yeah. You know? That's why I think Anthony is a good match for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's like the funniest. So yeah. it's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good. So. So now we just find a need to find like uh, somebody who knows. I need a, a, I need a very funny, tall, cute scientist who's not living with his parents. Mm. Um, what, if you had, no kids. what if you had a funny, short scientist who wasn't living with his parents? Ooh. What would you do? How short? Your Beth. height. My height? Fine. Okay. Okay. My height? Fine. Okay. I, I'll wear, I'll we'll rock flats. Out. I'll rock flats. Well, what if and he was I, okay with you being taller than him in heels? Would you be okay with that or no? It makes me uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
It makes But me, if he checked every other box. He checks every other box, I would probably have to get over it then. Honestly, if he yeah. checks every other box, it's really it's really my own insecurity. What if he's also it's, a Republican? I, oh, cuz here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> No fucking! <laughs> you, can't, you can't say that on television. <laughs> um, I've been attracted to many a shorter than me guy throughout my life. So in it's fact, le- like, it's legit not them. It's you. It legit is not them because I mean, a cute guy is a cute guy. Like yeah. I really don't care. But then I have always been so fucking self conscious about being a giantess. So yeah. like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, like I know. I, it just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. If a guy was super cool about it and was like, you are my Amazon queen and I'm going to like... I'm here for this. I'm here for this. And specifically. Yeah. <laughs> I would be completely down with yeah. it. But from what I've found when I have gone out with shorter guys is that it does give them a complex yeah. as well. A yeah. little bit. Well, so, I, and I feel like it's oftentimes like one of two things that either gives them a complex or I they fetishize, fetishize it. it. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I totally hear you on that. And yeah. like that, that is a sticky situation to be in. I'm just saying the right guy could be out there. I know and he could be year, year two. <laughs> Stay tuned. This yeah. is the year Christina finds true love and I'll check in with y'all next year. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Any resolutions like this for is, this year? This is just like a, it's like a live or like a, a diary that we're just, you know, I know. Yeah. Dear that I don't want my children, my future nope. children to ever listen nope. to. <laughs> I pray every day that Dylan does not listen to it. Oh my <laughs> God. Ugh. What if, no, no, I'm about to like, no. I'm about to give you nightmares. Never no. mind. I'll, no. I'll you withdraw. Keep that. You keep that down. <laughs> okay, I'll keep that to myself. You swallow that down with your, your champs. <laughs> okay. You swallow right. that. So we are fuck, Mary killing. Listen, I've had we're sweaty armpits since yep. you. Can we fuck, Mary friend? Fuck, nope. Mary friend. Nope. No, nope. I'm going with it. Oof. Mr. Rogers, Ouch. Tom Hanks <laughs> and Prince. Oh, fuck. You're fuck, hurting my heart. Mary kill. Oh, shit. Um, Y'all ready for this? Okay. Did you got one? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. You do yours I think first. I, know I always I do mine first. I'm going to marry Tom Hanks. Yeah. He is solid. hilarious. He is solid. He is kind of cute. I think he'd be a great husband. Yeah. He's Your kids middle, have middle class curly hair. Fancy up on the ass. He, he totally like yep. knows how to barbecue. Yep. That man tucks a polo into some jeans he brings you a glass of wine at like 11 he's like do you want to put on the daily show yeah and just like he, does. he rubs your feet yeah he does tom hanks gives great foot rubs yeah and he you does fucking know he yep. does tom i put hanks money on does it. the dishes yeah oh I bet he tom hanks does the, dishes. does the dishes he yeah does. and he likes and, the daily show because you know why he's super fucking liberal yeah <laughs> absolutely and you know he's got this great recipe for curry oh. like totally like once you know in a he while oh just whips it out. It's phenomenal. You know he so, does. So marrying and him. And he's been married forever. Like forever. they've been married forever. And I love them. Yeah. Loyal. And they're lovely. And yeah. they raised a really cute son. Because I'd he marry. He cute. Colin? I'd marry Is him. Is his name Colin? Yeah, I think Colin. so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He cute. Colin Hanks. Yeah. I'd marry him too. Oh, totally. He's, he's, he's like so handsome. nerdy cute. He dated um, Busy Phillips. Cute. And it's funny because I read her. Well, I listened to her book on Audible. But um, she has no bad words to say about him. She's <gasps> like, he's a fucking dream guy he's so nice it just didn't work out and we're still friends and it's he does just like have he's, one problematic great. kid he's got like a, a white rapper kid well but you, can't, you know what you can't, can't win, win them all. all and like maybe that was the start yeah. of pancake yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And maybe he was adopted it's- oh, oh no, no. I'm i cutting. joke because i'm adopted that's funny because i'm go. adopted <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're like, I can say that. I, yeah, can, I can say, say that. that. I am going to. There's only one option for fuck. There's. Uh, let's just get that out of the way, right? There's not? <gasps> no. <gasps> no. Are you going to fuck Mr. Rogers? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wanted you guys to think I was. Oh, God. Of course like, I'm going to fuck Does he Prince. leave the cardigan on? Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill Mr. Rogers. I'm going to kill How him. How dare you? I'm going to kill him. I'll tell you why. The fucking cat puppets freak me out. They've <laughs> oh, always freaked tiger. me out. I respect What's his name? <laughs> Ta- the tiger. What's his that name? That is so fucking weird. Daniel, Daniel Lyon. It weirded me out when I was a kid. It weirds me Mr. out now. Oh, oh, Mr. Feely. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. 
can't. I can't. I can't do it. But he brought so much joy. It, it did many. not bring me joy as a kid. As oh, a kid, I, I sat there show. and I was like, this is weird. I I, I love Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I love it. Too. So and much. I'm like, and I look back on it and I'm like, man, that was like a simpler time, you know? Because yeah. you look God, at it now. They're going to come at you oof. in your mentions. You are. I know. That's I know. Act, I know. C- <laughs> C O N N E. Okay, you better not. But yeah, Prince, you better I believe. Mean, and he yeah. is he is shorter than me significantly. Yeah, but he but wears he platforms, so you're fine. Wears platforms, and his you know persona is like he's like six foot eight, and he'll bed. make you pancakes. Here's my problem. I saw though. that Chappelle <laughs> pancakes. I'm feeling very sweaty about this situation. I'm not gonna lie. I, oh. I'll go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I. Just, I'm gonna have to agree. It's gonna be at the <gasps> same. I'm gonna have to marry. I have to marry Tom Hanks. Yes, you have to. Yeah, you cannot. I, he does rub your this feet. This is and why I, I wanted rub. to friend. I, I want a friend. I couldn't. Mr. Rogers. I couldn't I marry Prince though. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. yeah. No. There's no. just some reason. No, it's, it's just like, like one night stand, and you're it's a one night stand. And you walk away, exactly. and you're happy, and I still enjoy your music. And he would treat you very respectfully, yeah. oh, and it would be absolutely. safe sex. And, yeah, uh, all on my mom's t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. all on. You wouldn't get pregnant. Yes. No, That's but you cool. could only marry Prince if you were like, I'm okay if we keep this relationship wide, fucking open. Yeah, That's absolutely. the only way I think you could marry him. Yeah. yeah. So key, yeah. What are you gonna do? I also am, and so I'm going to friend Mr. Rogers. See, that's exactly what uh, Christina is not allowing it. She's shaking Dude, her head. At least way immediately. Because this is why I wanted to friend is because I do want him to be my that's neighbor. That's not the stakes. I do want you to that's be my not neighbor. the stakes in FMK. And I have we been changed it for the queer really eye guys and also the cat puppets. I mean, and you the make trolley. Do you, do you hate cat puppets? I they mean, were I weird looking, and I, I actually them. I think it's kind of weird. Maybe puppets for me are a little bit like balloons are for you. Oh, They're very okay. unsettling. I do okay. not care for Pinocchio. I don't care okay. for puppets. I don't care for marionettes, especially oh, with yeah. the herky jerky okay. way that they move. Fun fact does not make me happy. I love the word. I <laughs> was in a puppeteer group. Same. Yes, I was. I was too. Yep. Did, those but, like, little like the, the like Muppet yep. ones. As, but yes. like in, through your church. Yes. <gasps> yes. <gasps> <gasps> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for this. We are going to take five and come right back with stories. And I'm going to talk to these Wait, girls about their weird church puppet. I didn't even tell you my FMK. <gasps> oh, shit. Okay. I mean, I just, I feel a tremendous <laughs> amount of guilt killing Mr. Rogers. Because I felt a tremendous amount of sadness when he died, I and did, and I did too. He brought so much joy, so much joy, and Daniel he gave Tiger. us PBS and Daniel Tiger. But can you fuck Mr. Rogers? No, I can't. No, 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 and you can't I marry can't. him either. Really, it's like Any marrying am- your dad. Mm, <laughs> no, <laughs> said, dude. No. Yeah, those cat puppets are turning up in Listen, bed. Listen, oh. I love mm. Daniel Tiger. I love him. I think he's very cute, but I don't want him to turn up in bed. No. He's got a weird smile. I don't like that smile looking down on me, if I'm Listen, honest. Listen, you don't ever hear anything bad about him, and he's been gone for a long time. There's yeah. nobody coming out of the woodwork. Me no, there's a statue no, no. of him in Pittsburgh. I don't think anything bad about him, but I'm like, I'm not going to fuck him. Because fuck a man who has you. his own statue. But no, I, I'm not I'm not. Lots either. of men with statues. That yeah. You can fuck Rocky, too. But okay, I, I think we're all in agreement here. Sadly, if you're gonna come for anybody, internet, come for Christina, because um, because <laughs> Cassie and I, it. Cassie and I, it was we felt forced. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't give us Tom Hanks and Prince, and then I mean, what what were we supposed to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. cannot kill Tom Hanks. No, no. It's he against is the law, actually. A national fucking and you treasure. have to fuck Prince literally. Yeah, against the law to kill Tom Hanks because he's actually still alive and, uh, <laughs> and that would be murder that would be murder <laughs> okay well, this went off the rails well, you, yeah. you, real quick you can lecture us on puppeteering now that's fine no I, I need to know more about this so we're going to take five and we'll be right back with stories Here's a note, so holy you shit can tell me. <laughs> and we're back all right I'm going to lead us off with stories right now uh, since I have the crazy in love this week this is from a longtime uh, fan of ours, friend of the podcast. I'm not going to say her name in case she doesn't want it mentioned, but you know who you are. And thank you for being around. And we love you. And we love you. So she says, 
Just uh, just over a year and a half ago, I moved to a new area, which I absolutely hate. I have four years Aww. here. I know it's, it's a bad opening sentence. <laughs> Aww, that's the worst. I know. Living somewhere that you know you don't like sucks. And since I know this person, I know that she's military. I know that that also means sometimes moving to places where you don't want to go. Yeah. And like that also sucks. Um, I have four years here, so I try to make the best of it. What do I uh what do I do whenever I move to a new area? I get on a dating site to meet people. You would think I'd learn by now. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways, the guys around here are low quality and will put their dick in any and Ooh. I mean any hole they can. Yay. Oh, wow. No. Hot take. <laughs> she really hates this That's town. That's spicy. <laughs> she, she, you know, you sure. don't think much of these guys. <laughs> no, yes. uh, for sure. Dude, I tell you, the brand new like motto for my like my dating for this upcoming year is low expectations, <laughs> high standards. <laughs> that that is exactly right. I think that is exactly the right mentality to go to. Don't expect much, but keep your standards where they are. Yeah. Low yeah. Word expectations. <laughs> yeah. Coffee dates. Coffee dates all around. Coffee dates. Where, uh, my expectations coffee. are not at dinner. Yeah. They are at coffee. Yes. <laughs> and just be be a normal human. Yeah. That, that's just so sad. Be, please. Just be a normal You're like human. a year in of dating. All I need is for you to be like an just average a human. a normal person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she says... The others are arranged from backwoods missing teeth Oof. to so-called religious do-gooders who wouldn't know how to be sincere even if they smacked their heads with a Hallmark sign. Oh, oh damn. damn. No. Oh, damn. <laughs> so wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's pause. So what we're, what she's trying to say is that she loves where she's living right now. Yeah. yeah and, totally. you know, full yeah, no. of just high class five star human beings. <laughs> five star. Fucking oh, everywhere. No. All the Yelp reviews. Five <laughs> she says, so my choices here are extremely limited, clearly. No. I do not want to go wherever you are. Because yeah. if that's the entire dating know. pool, there are no normal people anywhere. Really? Right? No. Like, are you closer to a big city? Jesus. <laughs> um, so she's talking about dating. The dating pool is a little suspicious. Okay. She says, I have two stories out of this ridiculous dating adventure here. After the second, I decided to just wait until I moved to start dating again. He went out of his way to match with me just so he could send me a nasty message about my tattoos. What? Uh. I'm heavily tattooed, not completely covered, but a full leg, full arm, chest piece, and other pieces. He told me my leg was disgusting and looked like dog shit. Went out of his way to match with you to tell you that. Wow. What is wrong with people? Trash. Wow. Like, I, I think there's something about the... And it's not like you're anonymous when you're on, like, a, a dating app or something. Because right. there's, there's like, all these internet trolls or whatever that hide behind the anonymity to just be, like, miserable fucking horrible humans or whatever. Right. But, like, you have pictures of yourself, like, holding your niece you know, yeah. are you going to be like, like a complete who you are. fucking asshole? And again, like, what is wrong again, with you? I don't, it, it takes effort to match with someone and send them a message where you can think whatever you want. Find me on Tinder. Think that to yourself. But to go out of your way to match and send a message. Just to be nasty. Just to be nasty. Pussy is embargo, like, man. Pussy oh. embargo. We are put. Listen, I need a name. I need his name. I so we can, put, oh, we can add him to our list. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's, an, it's a very large Excel doc. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. We're gonna have Flashes fifty on. tabs sorted by state. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll branch out in other countries as we progress. Yes. Listen, everyone, call us to check before you go out on a date. Yes. Yeah. I'll be like, hold on, let me check. Let me cross reference. <laughs> Just a second. Hold. Do you know any previous states he lived in? We'll check that list too. Okay. Good call. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, he goes on to say I am a pretty girl and why would I fuck up my body like that okay Ugh. I get it tattoos aren't your thing but there was really no need to give me your opinions when I clearly never asked for it thank you next amen yep I, that I that would be on my list of deal breakers like yeah. do not ever suggest something to me that you think could be an improvement to me Trust me, I've already thought about I it. I made a decision, especially something like a tattoo. I have tattoos. I made decisions to get those tattoos. Yeah. Because yeah. I like them. And I couldn't give up. fuck what If you, you like them at yeah. all, it's my body. Yeah. I'm happy with it. If you don't, keep it fucking moving. Yeah. We don't need that kind of shit here. 
The second one seemed promising. I forget where he was actually from, somewhere Midwest, and wanted to move back to Florida just like me. Um, he was here because the military brought local business because the military brought him here. So relatable. He was in the Navy and now works at a local business airport. We hit it off immediately, probably because we're both outsiders here. He works out a lot, likes to go out and have fun, loves the beach, everything I enjoy doing. We texted back and forth for a while and finally decided to meet up. So the day came and I got myself dolled up. At one point during the texting, he made suggestions about after dinner, we go back to his place. I told him that I hope he didn't expect me to sleep with him on our first date because I still didn't know much about his dating history. There are a lot of STDs around here, so my worry was Damn. valid. Yeah, she is roasting this place hard. Yeah. This place, <laughs> I am afraid. This place might burn down. <laughs> yeah. It seems fire. very flammable. Exactly. This place. <laughs> flammable. Wow. Uh, there should be like a Excuse fucking me, warning flam. on this town as you enter in, as you drive in. <laughs> Just a warning. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. I finally get ready and I'm sitting in my truck ready to leave and I ask him what restaurant we were going to because we had two different ones in mind. That asshat told me he changed his mind and was just going to stay home and meal prep instead. Uh, Are you fucking kidding wait, me? Wait, what? What? I think because she didn't put out. Like she was like, I'm not going to put oh, out. He oh, was like, never like- mind. I'm just going to stay home and get swole, bruh. Never mind. Do you even lift, bro? Do you even lift, bro? Keto life. <laughs> oh, that's my life. <laughs> I mean, I'm all bit. No real. shame, but but for real, high fat, high fat, no protein. They're all protein. <laughs> Did you even check your macros today? <laughs> Did you pee on the stair? <laughs> what are your ketones? I asked if he was serious because I was ready and sitting in my truck with it <gasps> running. And he said, yeah, I don't really feel like going out tonight. I asked if it was because I said I wouldn't sleep with him on the first date. And he never texted me back. Oh, Ew. So, yes. Fucking piece of Pussy shit. Pussy embargo. No, yes. really. He completely ghosted me afterwards. And so begins my now two more years of no dating. Ugh. Oh, my Until God. next story. Love you, ladies. Oh, Ugh. good luck, man. Jesus. Jesus. That sounds like a Disney-ester. Dude. Oh, yeah. Any of that. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and for like, I'm sorry, diamond in the rough. I just want to know that you don't have a fucking dirty dick before I sleep with you. Is that like, too that's, much Is that too much too to much ask? ask? Yeah. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Like, here's the thing. Okay. I'm, I might sleep with you on the first date. Yeah. Let's see I'll, how it goes. I'll say that. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. But when you put it out there like yeah. that, then I'm all, immediately suspicious. number one. Yeah. Two, like kind of turned off. Yeah. I, I just, I. It's a definite just, no. Just be nice to me and I'll probably fuck you. Be That's normal. all you have to do. Just be normal. be normal. Just, just be normal. Be cool. Be cool, Why would dude? you say that be like cool. before we even go out? Be cool. Be cool, Listen, be cool, man. man. Just, just be cool. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, this is subject, my worst, in quotations, date. Oh. I know. I'm like, so maybe, maybe not a date? Maybe not a date. I don't know. Okay. So not providing my name because I'd like to remain anonymous. Ooh. ooh. Understood. Ooh. Yes. That means it's spicy. I know. You know it's going to be good then. Hi, ladies. I just started listening to the podcast, but I lost all of my shit at work when you played Fuck, Mary Kill with Lincoln, Kennedy, and Roosevelt. <laughs> and now I'm a fan for I, w- I would say that that's a favorite yes. episode. I think we get more comments about that than like anything else. <laughs> oh, my God. We are such dorks. <laughs> that, was a- that is also one of my favorites. That's so good. Oh. Thanks for the laughs so far. I haven't had many dates, in quotes, in general. I was kind of a late bloomer, but I have had my share of what the fuck moments. Yep. Yeah. Same. There was the, the guy who told me I would, quote, look good pregnant <gasps> while we were in the middle of hiking in the middle of the fucking woods alone. I don't like that. Or the guy who had a dead front tooth and instead <laughs> insisted on kissing me at the end of the day. <laughs> Fun time. <laughs> <laughs> I just can imagine this fucking dead ass black tooth coming. I can't just coming for you. Like, oh. 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 oh, Keegan has no words. I don't like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That grosses me out. 
know. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Oh I know dental God. care is expensive. But I'm not trying to shame anybody. Like that shit's expensive. I get it. But like uh, also ask. Oh, ask uh, before you come on in with Keegan, that. Keegan, you'd look good pregnant. No what? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, legitimately, I think you would. You yeah. would glow. <laughs> you know what? I bet I already. wouldn't. I'd be that one who didn't glow. I'd be Dude, that one who's like I hair hope fell so, out. Actually, <gasps> how dare you? Because you're gorgeous already. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the the fucking mess. I would be the mess. I would yeah, be, I'd be like games. sweating like seven thousand like pounds. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be sweating like for just like no reason. Yeah, you see no, those like you. In, like Instagram uh, people that get pregnant and you're like legitimately that's what i eat that's what i look like after i eat chipotle no, and they're I, like oh, eight months I, alone. i'm not I'm even like, exaggerating i changed my what? i changed my outfit before i came over here because i looked at i ate potato soup and then i looked at myself in the mirror <gasps> I and i soup. it was it was loaded potato soup it was delicious mm. but then i looked at myself in the mirror and like in the pants i was wearing i'm like these could be maternity pants i could be four oh. and a half months pregnant right now <laughs> i really could i'm God. changing my clothes right now. <laughs> oh get <laughs> Out, my, <laughs> I'm sorry, Keegan. Would you, would you uh, kindly get the fuck out you of my house? You didn't see me. Get out of here. All right. So my favorite bad date wasn't really a date at all. At least not in my mind. I was 23 and living at home for a year after college. <clears throat> One of my best friends, we'll call her Cat, was visiting me in my hometown around Christmas time. Cat and I had a mutual friend. The secret, Gary. the secrecy around this uh, email is it's, like, I love it. It's mm-hmm. it's high, highly, it's high secret, highly classified. I also yes. just want to point out that I worked with a cat and a Gary together. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So do I, uh, Vivian, Side is this you? <laughs> <laughs> it is Vivian. And now I she's knew pissed. It. She's, God damn it. You weren't supposed to know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So a uh, mutual friend named Gary who lived in my hometown. One night, Gary invited Kat and I to meet up with him and some of his hockey bros at a bar near my house. Not the same Gary. Uh, I don't like I don't like hockey bros. I kind of feel like I would. I would too. I'm not going to lie. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not saying bros. I won't like hockey bros the people. I don't like it if they refer to themselves that way. Oh, no. Like, I feel like that's going to be bad. Well, he called his friends and some of my hockey bros, I think is what it's kind of in quotes, like okay. and some of his hockey bros. But mm-hmm. if he calls hey. them that, I think I don't. I don't like that. Mm. Not even Gary. Gary's so nice. Okay. Even if he All called. Right. I mean, Gary, you know, he's just playing around, really. Anyway, God, let's return. <laughs> Gary had <laughs> Gary had bought two brought two friends with him, Bob and Jim. I guess that wow. I guess that as soon as Kat and I walked into the bar, Jim decided that I was going to be his wife. Unbeknownst to me, of course, Mm-mm. Kat and I ordered drinks, sat it, down. Is he going to come and like throw you over your shoulder no. and like carry caveman you out, your caveman, caveman out. style? I don't like, like that. Excuse me, Flintstone, but uh, <laughs> no. Kat and I ordered drinks, sat down, introduced ourselves to Bob and Jim, and started shooting the shit with Gary. Jim flirted with me a little. I wasn't that interested, but whatever. It was attention, so I didn't completely blow him off. I don't remember how it came up, but I mentioned offhand that I didn't really want kids. I'm older now and have um, have since changed my mind, but I was barely functioning as a human at 23 yeah, and living 23. with my mother. I had no interest in raising a baby, my body, my choice in a conversation, right? Wrong. Jim began to tell me that I just hadn't met the right man yet. <gasps> no. Nope. And that once I did, I would change my mind. Well, I feel like I have to change my accent. Once I did, I changed my mind <laughs> in order to fulfill that man and make him happy. When this flawless argument uh, uh, clearly failed to convince me, Jim got more aggressive. At one point, he practically shouted something like, oh, so you're just going to trick a man into marrying you and then not give him kids? He was so personally offended that I didn't want kids that I could only assume he had already planned our entire future together in his head in the 20 minutes which we had known each other. What I, the fuck? I am about to throw this table. I know. Across the room. I know. I'd appreciate you not. Um, it's my house. I, <laughs> I cannot even believe that. I cannot. As somebody yeah. that's like honestly like wrestled with the choice it's been it's been a thing for me like i've never had that that want to have kids never 
has been like a drive for me. Yeah, me either. And it has been a war. It's I'm 37 now. You don't think that my body goes into overdrive when I smell a baby. It does. My <laughs> body, my body's like, hey, girl, baby smell is fucking primal. We running yeah. out of time. But there's also been like nothing in me that's like, ha- I I have I no to desire. Mother. To yeah. mother. There's yeah. nothing well, mothery and, and about first of all, how yeah. dare you and think how... that I'm pushing anything out of my body <sighs> oh, my for God. you, yes. sir. Yes. Ever. Ever. And you're fucking committing yourself to a lifetime yeah. commitment. Yeah. Yeah. A child is a lifetime commitment. Why would I make that kind of decision based on what someone else wants? That is a decision that you have to decide between the two of, of you. Also, why the fuck are we talking about this after knowing each other for 20 oh, minutes, you fucking weirdo? Sir. Fucking not. And the, I am so fucking offended by you would trick a man to marry you and then not give him, him kids. a baby. Ugh. Yeah. You, listen, I guarantee you if men could get pregnant, this would not be a conversation that we would oh, be God, fucking no. having right no, now. Never. No, there's a lot of things that'd be different if men had to carry around i want you to push a baby out of your urethra (laughs) and then we can talk about it yeah right have fun bye um this was years ago so i don't remember every detail but i'm pretty sure kat and i just sat there and stared at jim until he had tired himself out like a huge tantrum tantrum throwing man baby he was oh my god that's why he likes babies mm-hmm. and then he, <laughs> he left can relate. Sh- yeah. he needs a playmate yeah <laughs> and then he left shortly after it was weird it was so weird i have since met the love of my life who is a feminist and wonderful in every way we spent our entire first date swapping okay cupid stories <gasps> and telling each other wow you're so normal right and some of those this, in <laughs> i didn't even have to trick him into proposing to me with the promise of kids Kids. He treats me like a whole human woman, <gasps> not just Amazing. an incubator for his seed. Crazy, right? I still think of Jim occasionally. I hope he got the therapy he clearly needed. Oh, there's hope out there. But, I mean, bless up prayers. Yeah, prayers, prayers. And I Hopes need, and I need that hope because I'm going to share <gasps> an original, an oh, OG. OG. Yeah, yeah. I um. Okay. So. This is the year episode, year anniversary. Yes, ma'am. I've been dating for a year and a half now. Now, I have been very upfront with my dates that I go out on uh, as I've progressed through the year and a half. When I first started getting out on the dating scene, I was like, my little thing, you know, on Bumble was like, what are you looking for? And I was like, something casual. Yeah. Soup's cash. Soup's cash. Don't try to lock this down. I don't want to have your baby. Mama's crazy and doesn't, doesn't, not ready. Mama, she's crazy. <laughs> exactly. Now, that's since progressed, you know, little like baby steps here and there where I'm like, maybe I'm almost ready. No, nope, not quite ready yet. And I've, I've been very communicative and very open. And there have been periods of time during that year and a half where I haven't dated because things have been so like crazy and like tumultuous. And I'm like, I'm not going to bring somebody into this. I got to figure myself out. I got to figure out my own fucking house before I'm able to be a whole person and meet another whole person and have a fucking healthy adult relationship. Is that like you feel is a good? Yes. Yeah. 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 That is a wise choice. Okay. So Monday, I, match with somebody on bumble like a week ago oh wait is this yes <gasps> oh okay. edit this out adam brody adrian adam brody. Adrian, adrian brody whatever yeah yeah one yeah. of those yeah okay. we'll we'll call him adrian brody okay we'll call him adrian brody i it's match with adrian, adrian brody, brody. God oh, damn it well, that would be amazing i did actually wait on him at the job he's and so I've, cute he's so cute and i've never oh. had somebody he looked he looked into the depths of my soul. Oh, he's and so I've handsome. never had look at someone look at me. That's with why that he's so successful. I always love hearing these stories because <laughs> I'm like, like, that's why that man's successful. He's, he's got a so quality. He, yeah, I was like, is he straight? I, think I don't. So. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I was well, like, he kissed. I'm, well, that doesn't mean anything. He kissed the fuck out of Halle Berry when he won his Oscar. He's so mean fucking anything. hot. <laughs> Ooh, I just got chills Ooh, in a good way. You need to kiss the lips that kissed Halle Berry's lips. Amen. So, anyways, put him on your list. 
who Adrian Brody, yeah. the real one? Do you think yeah. he's oh. below Bill Hader or above? Below. Okay. Ooh, All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes Good. Milo Vince Milia. Yep. It goes Colin, Colin. Hanks. Yep. It goes Bill Hader. Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Cool. I mean, somewhere in there, we're missing like we're missing Matthew Good, who's like, oh, yeah. Matthew we Good's got to be him. second. I still think Milo's got to be at the top. Yeah. yeah. Milo. So Matthew Good may be second because yeah. he's. He's V handsome. I ship Milo for you though. Yeah, so great. Hard. I do too. He's kind of nerdy. Is he kind of short though? Yeah, he remembers. We're getting a little bit. Track. He's he's my height. Okay. Right. Okay. Fine. Not okay. in heels. Anyway, proceed. Anyway, blonde Adrian Brody. Blonde Adrian Brody. I match with him. The conversation is very witty. It's a good back and forth. And uh, the problem is he lives like a good twenty miles away, which twenty miles in LA might as well be in another three hours. That's another state. Fucking essentially, that's LA long distance. Yeah. Like you're an after eight p.m. friend at best. At best. So you're was, geographically undesirable. Yeah, after eight p.m. before eleven a.m. Yeah. 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 Weekends maybe. So. I happen to be down in his area, though, when we went Monday yeah. for like a Memorial Day barbecue. And I'm like, let's meet up for a drink. So I meet him. He does not look like Adrian Brody in person. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. He is probably a good 30 pounds thinner. Thinner? thinner. He was thin in the pictures no, I saw. Shit. He was gaunt. <gasps> very gaunt oh, and no. also had a, a very Nosferatu kind of oh, posture oh, I don't like that <laughs> what in the fuck you, you <laughs> just made a you just made a movement like you had hooves like a praying mantis I don't like it do you know what I'm talking about I Where know like, exactly what you're talking about yes hunchback hunch fucking very hunched arms in front yes. elbows out yeah like like this. very hunched <laughs> you guys so are literally he's, doing he's, it he's sitting he's got his, his, his spine is kind of Yes. out, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Whereas, like, like okay, <laughs> I didn't know I had a time that like posture was a thing for me. Now you know. Where I was just like, now, now know. I know. I was like, <laughs> looking. You know, it's like, like it's one of those things you don't notice unless it's really bad. Really bad. Yes. Because here's the thing: I don't he's, have good posture. It's like the drums of <laughs> deal breakers. Yeah. Where I was like, drums, you you don't notice unless they're really fucking really bad. bad. Yeah. Yes, because I'm like really I don't, good. I don't have or good posture, really bad. so I don't feel like I can judge other people's posture because my posture is not great. I sit at a computer all day. I don't do yoga. My posture is not good, but. <sighs> If your posture, if you look like you are slumped all the way fucking over, or like Nosferatu, or yeah, legitimately, if you're, if you're holding your fucking shoulders to your ears and you're silent like, movie vampire. Oh my it's god, a, it's a That's it's a no. Hilarious. I can literally visualize it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I so can anyway. too, and it's not good. So, anyways, I get there, like hug him, get it, get a drink, and he's he's talking. Also, again, I think we shared this on the shorty. The voice did not match the the person, which was very uh, so disconcerting. Yeah, it puts, it's very it's disconcerting. I was like, kind of like Don't a silent movie it. star. Yeah, Ooh. same. So, I can't stand him. <laughs> I can't stand him. I can't stand him. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we're 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 talking and I'm finally digging into the meat of who this person is and here's here's where I'm I'm learning. I can learn something every single day. See? That maybe I focus too much on music when I'm talking to people. And not so much into maybe what their actual lives is. And just because somebody mm. might like a lot of good music. You're like, oh, you not like Radiohead? Nice. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. You oh. know what, Christina? I will say for our one year, I think that that's a good takeaway. <laughs> yeah. A great yeah, takeaway. That is a good revelation it's, to have it's at our not, one year. It's not just music. You might want to find out if this person <laughs> has a job. Has a job. I knew it. I fucking knew it. He doesn't. He does not have a job. Does he smoke a lot of weed? Because I knew somebody who was very, very, very thin like that. Meth. I knew <gasps> it. <laughs> Cassie has left. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I'm, I need details. How did you learn this information? Did he tell you? 
He was very upfront. He was upfront. Yes. He's like, he, excuse me, he I have a math left, problem. He left a wife and a three-year-old child in Portland and is squatting in his mother's rental property. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put a time out. I'm going to put a pin in that. And I'm going to say, listen, I love you dearly. I don't want to say I told you so. But when you told yep, me yep. that he had a kid in Portland that he had no interest in like going back to see, I, I was like, that shit is weird. If you have a kid, yep. yeah, even you if it. you personally don't want to meet that kid, it's weird that he doesn't have a problem <laughs> we, we, with not seeing the kid. <laughs> yes, if he's on drugs, he's, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> he is squatting. <laughs> You're like, rewind. His mother's <laughs> rental property. <gasps> yeah. Does she know or is it legit squatting? And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, she knows. And here's, here's what we spoke about on our date. The other main topic of conversation were all of his other Bumble conquests. <gasps> and he's like, the Conquest. one the one that's my favorite right now is the, she wants to, to pay my car insurance since I let it lapse so I can come up to Hollywood to see her. <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> oh my God. What is that? So how did you end up out with this guy? Here, here Wait, is here is how thin is his hair? It's so thin. Oh, I knew it. it. I fucking, you fucking called, called it. God damn it! So here's also, I here didn't is want to be what an I'm saying because you were going to go out on that date, and I feel like I was like bursting your bubble when you showed me. I was like, mm. and you were like, well, <laughs> well, I told you he looked like somebody it. I didn't like. I, I was like, I know someone who looks like I that. Know, I, I know, I like know, and I I immediately thought I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to walk a shame this onto the podcast. I'm gonna have to. You were right you. to my girlfriend. But you know what? Uh, In your but, defense, but he was you. cute. He just looked like someone that I knew that I that I personally have a beef with. So mm-hmm. I was like, that guy was shitty. So now I'm projecting. Therefore, this yep, guy I think is this shitty. guy is shitty. Yep. And you were. Right. I think it's that same guy. It, it might be. <laughs> so here's it here's be. my issue with the date. Who the fuck is you Mm. to not have your shit together Mm -hmm. and come at a queen Mm. like me? Amen. Mm. Snaps, snaps, snaps. Mm. Who the fuck Mm. is you? Because I spent a fucking year and a half of my life getting my shit together and not going. Please tell me you said this. Not going and putting my shit on anyone else because I was like, you know what? I'm not ready. I'm not a whole person and I'm not going to put that on someone else. Damn it. Who the fuck is you? To come, to come on a fucking date with all that fucking baggage that you're not fucking dealing with and trying to fuck me? Nah. Did, did we not have a conversation not about a entitled men? There are certain men in our society who have been built up in such a way that they feel it doesn't matter what the fuck they do. They're still entitled to whatever. That's why he came out the gate with no shame. Oh, no because shame. Because he's not ashamed at no. all. And he should be. And he's just like, listen, I got bitches on bitches trying to pay my car insurance. What are you, you going to do bitches. for me? And I'm like, <laughs> and you're I'm going like, to pay for my makers on the rocks and I'm going to GTFO. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to pay for my of gas to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> in my car that's insured. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Like, I... I but you know what? I do think that there's a certain segment. It's it's that who raised you segment of the population, who by the way. Who fucking raised, raised you? you? I also think we need a shirt that says who the fuck is you because I think that that's funny. Yeah. Yes. But there is a certain who raised you segment of the population who just think that they are entitled to whatever. They think they're so amazing. Mm. That's why they behave this way because they clearly think they can well, get away with it. Clearly, he thinks he can get away with anything. He's living f- for free. free. Yeah. yeah, your mama needs to kick you the fuck out. We need to introduce mothers into this situation. Mm. Listen, kick your piece of sh- shit sons out so that the rest of the general population doesn't have to deal with it. Mm. I know. I know. Let's Do you know if my, his name to that list? Yeah, if my Puss, mom. Pussy embargo. That's pussy exactly embargo right. Um, on Adrian Brody. Alert. <laughs> <laughs> if my mom knew, if my brother had a kid that he was not fucking taken care of, there is a 0% chance that my mother would give him an out, like letting him live in her house and do meth and not contact his kid. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) She wouldn't let that happen. Yeah. Meth. And he's like, hey, guess what? I do meth. Just How did that come up? Yeah, please. I need to know that. Well, because he doesn't really feel like drinking. And then we started like talking about like, drinking and like different drugs and he's talking about all the different drugs that he he had done and then he was like well you know and then from time to time he's like there there was this 
was, sir, I'm looking at you right now. And from time to time, I do a little bit of meth. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Just sprinkle it on. MB- MBD. So I was like, okay. Like, and here's the thing. Like, like I said, I'm not coming at, at anyone, no one, given my fucking history and the own mistakes and everything that I've made. I'm definitely not going to judge Judy fucking anybody. Do you, if you're not hurting anybody, whatevs, but the cumulative story of this gentleman was that his shit was so not together. Like this isn't a carry on baggage. Like this, no. this shit doesn't get on the plane. This no, they're like check too big. This. No, it's too. You're going to have yeah. to FedEx that. Yeah, sir. Yeah. That's yeah, a, yeah. That's, ba- that's baggage that on baggage on baggage. That shit is getting stopped by TSA. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not getting, getting looked through. Yeah. It's not getting past security. You're not getting through customs with that bag. No. Right. No. no. That's right. That's no, it. no, no. So, yeah, I don't. And wanna, you're like, bitch, okay. I'm don't customs. be on fucking Bumble or don't be on. And yes. then I fucking had a blowout with Medic, too, because he's like, he'll zombie out of fucking nowhere or whatever. And I'm like, motherfuckers, here's uh, this is what I know coming into this on a year anniversary. I'm like, Y'all ain't fucking ready for this. You are not ready for anybody. And it's irresponsible. And, it's irresponsible. it's irresponsible. and that's exactly right. So not that I feel like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like on this podcast, we put things out there and people can be going through something and I'm not trying to blanket shame people who are going to be shit. honest about who you I, are though. I, I get that. Up. I totally get that. If, if you are doing whatever you're doing, like that's fine what we have said since the beginning of this podcast is like, don't put your shit on other people though. Correct. Like if you're going through something, that's okay. And if you feel like we're being hard on something, an activity that you participate in, I'm sorry, that's not our intention, but it's just like you are wasting other people's time. Right. When you misrepresent yourself on the internet. Yeah. Thank don't you. Don't do that. That's the perfect, perfect wrap up. Cause that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. Cause you know? he did misrepresent himself. He did. Yeah. I, like, I mean, if you have his profile, that he's a meth addict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. It's Ugh. just a mess. So, yeah. Ugh. Happy year anniversary. There you go. That's so, my story. All right. I you feel know like what? we should cheers to that yeah. real quick. Cheers to that. Live and learn. <laughs> Live and yes. learn. Live and learn and listen to Lizzo and fucking. Amen. Live and learn and listen to Lizzo. That should be a sticker. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, I have to ask you guys this because every time it's my turn to do a crazy in love, I get like fucking nervous good do because you, you get, shouldn't do, get nervous do you guys get nervous yes uh, every time every time for a crazy in love um yes. you know what it is for I me i get fucking like nervous like I i'm like get, i don't know oh, what if i fuck it up nervous i get i get the they're gonna know the story and it's gonna be so fucking and they're gonna know like i just feel like i have to do so much work <laughs> I just feel like I have to do well. I don't know. I'm like, yeah. what if this sucks? I love you guys. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Wine. 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 Okay. So I'm not going to tell you this is about. I'm just going to let the story okay. let it run out unfold. Okay. as it does. Okay. On March 1st, 2008, at about 4.30 in the morning in Alba, Texas, resident Tommy Gatson was awakened by screams and pounding on his home. When he went out to look, he found 41-year-old Terry Caffey, who was his nearest neighbor. Now, they live in a very rural area. There's only like, there's less than 500 people who live in this town. Holy shit. It's an extremely small. small town in Texas. And they live in a very rural community. So their nearest neighbor, I can relate hardcore living in a small town in Missouri. Right. Their nearest neighbor is pretty far away. So... He sees his neighbor, Terry Caffey, on his porch, laying down, caked from the waist up in blood. First of all, anyone knocking on your door yeah. these days is a frightening Well, thing. And you're in Texas. You're, my, you're lucky you didn't get shot. My yeah. apartment complex was broken into last night. So, yes. 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 Yeah. Very scary. All scary. So um, he finds him out there caked in blood. He's in a T-shirt, pajama pants. One wet sock, which I kept that in because I'm just huh? like, what the fuck is worse than a wet sock? One, it's the one worst. singular wet sock. One singular wet sock. And it's a cold night because, you know, it's 430 in the morning, even though it's Texas. It's yeah. early March. You know, um, he brings him in. Tommy brings him into the house. He had been shot five times. <gasps> 
once in the head. <gasps> oh my God. Twice near it was his, able to make it to his house? Twice near his right shoulder and two more times in the back. So he <gasps> oh had God. managed to stumble and crawl the 500 yards oh no. to his neighbor's house after his family had been attacked. Now, I wanted to do this story because I had seen this like forever ago and I spent so long trying to find the video I had watched because I had gone into a real deep, deep dark hole of just allowing videos on YouTube about true crime to just play uh. um, for hours at a time, mm-hmm. a, a, like a few months back. Yeah. And so it got lost in the shuffle. But I remember this story because I remember him talking about it, um, about like getting to his neighbor's house and how like difficult it was. Mm. So um, his What's family, his name again? Terry Caffey. Terry, got it. So his family had been attacked in the middle of the night and he had stumbled the 500 yards to his neighbor's house. And along the way, he even like fell into a creek. He almost drowned. Jesus. Like on his way over because he couldn't like get himself not fully functioning. up. He'd been shot four times above the hip. Like, oh, all, I mean, God. sorry, five times because once in the face. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh, I've got chills. Mm-hmm. So Tommy Gatson, the neighbor, he calls the Rains County Sheriff's Office and they arrive a short while later. Uh, Terry told the arriving officer, they're all gone. Charlie Wilkinson shot my family. So they could see from the Gatson residence when they looked over at the Caffey residence that the sky was orange. (gasps) The house was on on fire. fire. It was burning down. It was nearly completely destroyed. So on Terry's way to the hospital, he manages to tell the officers that Charlie Wilkinson um, was his 16-year-old daughter, Erin's boyfriend whom he and his wife had just told they had just told Aaron that she was no longer allowed to see him so that's what happened okay Ooh. let's rewind okay so that's that's where that's we are okay I, I will right. say I got okay. almost all of this information I remembered this information from that video I'd watched but I was not able to find that video again so then I googled and I found this incredible very long article on Texas Monthly it is like chapters. It is, <gasps> oh, it is a I long article. I love when local newspapers do out. those stories because honestly, I've done a couple of crazy and love stories based on those and they're always the best because yeah, they well put that done. local fucking color in it and it mm-hmm. is always well Which done. Which is why I have like, six pages of wow. notes because I'm like, okay, I need to leave out some of these mm-hmm. like, you know, charms. But like if you go and Google Aaron Caffey and find the Texas Monthly article, read it because... It's worth reading because it has all of that, all like, the local, bits. local um, charm like, and all Yeah, that. legit. So, again, Alba is a rural community of about 492 people. Wow. It's deeply religious. And when I say religious, I mean very Christian. Yeah. Extremely Christian. Like, everything about this town was something that I could relate to so, so deeply yeah. as someone who grew up in a very small... I bet they small had a puppet show. ...Midwestern town. I bet you they fucking did. Damn right. Um, the Caffeys were extremely <laughs> active in their church, the Miracle Faith Baptist. I bet Miracle Faith Baptist had a puppet show. Had a puppet show. <laughs> where the mother... One of them was the lamb. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you so. <laughs> um, where the mother, Penny, she played piano for mm-hmm. the choir. Terry worked as a health aide, but he was also a lay preacher, which I'm not sure what that means. It's just like one who does lay it pastor. for I think that's the pastor who's like not, um, it's not their like permanent. He like, he's um, like a stand in until the like a substitute. Next, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I so think that's what that means. He's a lay preacher. And Aaron, so don't quote me. Yeah. Aaron sang in the church. There were also two boys. So there was Matthew who was in seventh grade. He was known as Bubba to the family. And Tyler, who was a fourth grader, and all of them participated. You were shaking your head so hard. I'm just like, Aww. it's so Texas. <laughs> Bubba. Um, and they all participated in like the church choir activities. Like uh, Bubba would play the harmonica and like, you know, Aaron would sing. Penny and would play the piano. Penny would play the lamb. And then there is Tyler, who is a fourth grader. All three children had been taken out of public school. Again, something, listen, also something I can relate to. Oh, my eyes so they, I'm so sorry. I mean, I was homeschooled. I get it. They were taken out of public school, but you guys are going to roll your eyes a few more times through this. They were taken out of public school and homeschooled using a Bible-based curriculum. <laughs> After a girl... Aren't, aren't, like, the majority of homeschool curriculums Bible-based? There's a lot. I've, I had a really hard time it's, when my son was homeschooled. By homeschooled, I mean he was had a private home 
that yeah, you yeah, to. no, no. A mm-hmm. lot of a it's lot really of homeschool hard. curriculums are Bible based. Yes, say. Um, but you guys are about to. We just got to muscle through those paragraphs sorry. because no, no, no. You're good, but I mean, it was one that made me like really. So they pulled, and they are the victims here, one hundred percent. But the parents did pull all three of their children out of school because when Aaron was thirteen. A girl in her school had a crush on her and kissed her in the hallway. And so they immediately took all of their kids out of public school for three "Mm -hmm." years. They took Mm -hmm. them all out of public Mm -hmm. school. They literally said, not today, Satan. Not today, Satan, apparently. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was whenever Aaron was 13. When Erin was 16, she began working at, a, at the local Sonic. Again, my town of like 3,000 people had a fucking Sonic. That's like all we had. We were very proud of it. Lots of I'm small not, towns. This never is what had they it. Get. I've never Sonic had is Sonic. Such is such a small it, town what? thing. Is it good? No. I mean, <laughs> it's not. It, 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 I'm going to fucking play. Like, they, I, got, they got tater tots and that's it. That's they, the only thing. If, if you I go to Sonic, if you go to Sonic, here's what you need to get. You need to get, they will give you fucking chili cheese tater tots. In one of these, like, fucking long, like, a huge portion of, like, chili and cheese tater shots. Those bitches are good. Also, they'll give you a foot-long coney covered in chili and cheese. Those things are good. Okay. Now, some of the other stuff, not so much. You, yeah, their you burgers get, aren't good. You can get better shit at any other fast food place. Got it. But um, if you live in a small town, it's the only thing you have. Also, yeah. shakes. Also, I appreciate Sonic because they know what they are. Yeah. They know that they're just garbage food. And that they, they just, bring to your door, your like, window. I think that they they even decided recently to make a Red Bull slushie because those people know what they are. Yeah. And they're like, we're not going to be McDonald's and <laughs> pretend to be healthy. We're here to bring you the worst shit you could possibly have. Dude, You're welcome. I saw You're welcome. a meme the other day that was like, can we all acknowledge that there's a small segment of the population that is keeping Lon John Silver's open? Yeah. <laughs> That's an amen. That, that would have been me for sure, though. Amen. Can we talk about the Kyle video I sent you guys? Yeah. Sorry. I don't think I saw that. Oh, so, um, so she starts working at Sonic. She is, of course, super sheltered. And mm-hmm. one coworker said it was like she was seeing the world for the first time. She got uh-huh. lots of attention from boys and even once was caught by her youth pastor outside of her church making out with a boy. Yeah. Ooh, her parents were so deeply embarrassed that they immediately told her she was no longer allowed to see this guy, like this boy that she was making out you with. You know what works? Yeah, cutting Not your kids that. off from shit. Yeah. Um, so while working at Sonic, Aaron meets 18-year-old Charlie Wilkinson. And while he's like a pretty good looking boy, he's definitely that kind of like homegrown good old boy type. He wears Wranglers. He goes fishing and hunting. He drives a beat up 91 uh, Ford that has to be push started. Oh, he Lord. is a, you know, kind of rough around the edges sort of type, like small town type. Um. He and if you want to know what that means, his MySpace handle because we're talking 2008. Uh Oh, I can't wait. Was Hillbilly? Oh, he got on that shit. He's like, yeah, he's like, I got it it right away. It doesn't even have any numbers after it. Just Hillbilly. Just Hillbilly. Well, wow. I, think, I think on MySpace, you could pick whatever you wanted. You just had to have oh, your other shit. Oh, right, right, right. I, think, I was right, like, I that's fucking impressive. That, yeah, that's dedication. Yeah. Honestly, give that boy like, some credit. <laughs> I'm the first one on MySpace. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. So he recalls meeting Aaron. She was his car hop at Sonic. And he recalls meeting her by saying there was an instant vibe. And those around the two said that he was totally in love with her and considered her his soulmate. And he talked about her 24-7. So uh, the Must Caffies... in love. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fucking teenagers. Yeah. The Caffies did not allow Aaron to go out with Charlie alone. And he would visit her for half an hour during lunch breaks And then at the end of her shift, he would go back to her house. Like they would allow him to see her when they were around. So uh, he would go to her house. They would always have like bonfires. He would hang out with the family like all around the bonfire. Yeah. Um, Until about nine o'clock whenever her curfew was. Then he would go home. Then she would call him until 10 o'clock when her phone curfew was. Phone curfew. Separate. So That's it's cute. it's a very teenagery wholesome. protective wholesome thing. In December, Erin asked if she could go back to public school and her parents allowed it. 
Oh. Surprisingly, they said okay. That's shocking. It, it's With surprising. everything that's going well, on, her, they wouldn't... her brothers had been allowed to go back already. Oh. So her brothers were already back in public school. So she was like, can I go back to public school? Please, 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 please. I won't make out with any boys, I promise. She did not hold up to that <laughs> so she went Ugh. to public school in december deceptor christmas or i guess it probably in january then and um She's like and have you seen that white snake video that me that <laughs> me <laughs> so charlie and aaron became even more inseparable at this point and they would often go out to aaron's pickup and fool around eventually her that parents the most the most high the school-y most. thing. Like, in between... If you were allowed to, like, leave the school at lunch... Mm-hmm. like I get it. To go out to the parking lot. She had a pickup truck, so she was like... Yeah, I don't know why, for whatever this. reason, the last two sentences of your story put, I don't want to miss a thing by Aerosmith in don't my head. Don't want to miss a thing. Yeah, I can see that. It's yeah. the video for it. That's yeah. actually what she's describing is the video for this. Close my eyes. <laughs> yeah, totally. So... Eventually, around this time, her parents start to allow her to go out with Charlie alone. Up until this point, she hadn't been allowed to do that. So they're just I guess happy as gotten, a boy. They've gotten to know. Oh, him. <laughs> ouch! True. But they've gotten to know him for a while now, and I guess like they're just kind of like they don't like him. They still think he's like rough around the edges, but they're like it's puppy love. It's harmless. Like as long as she's back by nine thirty, pregnant. Just, just you can't get pu- pregnant on puppy love right everybody knows that it's science mean, it's science it's science um so they tell her like or they tell charlie like as long as she's back by 9 30 you guys can go out for dinner or whatever like that's fine so they start to do that and it is not long before they have sex because duh yeah <laughs> And um, puppy love because mm-hmm. puppy love. And one night, not long after that, Charlie pulls his car over when the two are driving together, pulls Aaron out of the car, kneels down on the pavement and presents That's the worst proposal ever presents Aaron with his grandmother's engagement ring. Oh, and Jesus. he says it's a promise ring and it's not a formal proposal, but he's declaring his intentions, which can we just. Do away with promise wings, rings. I know so many people in high school who did promise rings, and I'm like, I don't love it. I don't. Mm. You're 16. Yeah, you're 16. 90 percent of the people I know who got promise rings did not get the promise. Did not get the promise. (laughs) The promise. (laughs) The promise was not followed. The promise is broken. (laughs) You're like, I promise, I want to fuck you so bad. So, that's what the problem is. <laughs> that's I promise I want exactly that pussy. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> I promise I don't want you to give that pussy to anybody else. That's what that is. That is exactly. Um, I promise you I own that pussy. <laughs> so so a, a couple days go by. Aaron's mom notices the ring, asks her about it. And when the parents find out about it, they're super upset. Yep. And they yep. demand that she return it. And Terry who had never really liked Charlie, he said that he was disrespectful and said that, like, if he's disrespectful to me, like, how is he treating my daughter? So never liked him. Went and confronted him at a basketball game, like, in front of his homies. That's probably not a good idea. Gave him his ring back and was like, this is inappropriate. And from then on, they totally limited Aaron's interactions with Charlie. They limited them to once a week inside their home. Once a week inside their home. Custody? Yeah, I mean, listen, I know, right? they're, like the they're most clearly, contested, contested, and as it, as it goes on, I mean, they're, of course, they're clearly the victims here, but there are so many, like, yeah. we cannot, and this is such a common practice that happens, especially in the Bible Belt and in these communities, in communities I grew up with, up in, they don't work. Nope. Like, you can't do this. It's not going to work. Right. And also, Just like, like, the number one is thing. the only birth control. It's you, not going to work. Not going to work. If you wanted to make sure that I did something. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell me, me not I, to. Tell me not to. As a fucking 16 year old. And I was like, Ugh. I, mean, like I can't wait to yeah. do it. I can't wait to do it. So, I have so to do clearly, it now. Yeah. <laughs> this, Challenge accepted. <laughs> this caused tensions within the home. And Erin uh, even told her aunt that she was waiting until she turned 17 so she could run away with Charlie. And the fight's escalated and once when her mother caught her breaking phone curfew to talk to Charlie she was grounded and this meant that her car keys and her phone was taken away and her her visits from Charlie were suspended for weeks. Like, weeks. they were. Phone curfew. 
Yeah, it was the most sixteen year old shit broke, I've ever. She heard. broke phone curfew, and so <laughs> they had to drive her to school every day. Like they oh took her God. keys away for like weeks. Imagine, like you know, no. I'm just saying. No, no. so I don't like this, this is. But here's where it takes a turn. This oh, is when now is when it takes a turn. Now is when it takes a turn because up until now you're like you guys are kind of being like oh, a little oh. too much. But but here's what we're not gonna do. Fucking ask somebody to kill our parents. That's what we're not going to do. No. So this is when Aaron began to relentlessly beg Charlie to kill her parents. Mm -hmm. She said it was the only way that they could be together. Mm -hmm. And she talked about it constantly. Charlie uh, wanted to be with Aaron and told her that he would do whatever it took to make her happy. Yet those around him said that he really only wanted to run away with Aaron. And up to two days before the murders said that he wished he could just get her pregnant because then the Caffies would have no choice but to accept him. <laughs> this is so sad. It's so oh. it's so Midwest teenager sad. Um, but Erin was insistent. She said she was too young to have a baby. And she said as long as her parents were alive, she and Charlie would be apart. You're too young to have a baby, but you're old enough. The, this is where my head is. Mm-hmm. To yep. murder your parents. Family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, on February 27th, three days before the murders, the Cathy's demanded that Erin break up with Charlie. Earlier that day, Penny had stopped by the local library at, which I also think is the most Midwest thing of all yep. time. They don't have a at-home computer. She went to the library. She logged into MySpace, saw Charlie's oh. MySpace profile. And Hillbilly. it included <laughs> documents about having sex and getting drunk on his MySpace. Uh. And so when Aaron came home, her father and mother were waiting for her. And they were like, you need to end this now. She seemed okay with it. She was like, I've been wanting to end this. I just haven't been able to figure out the right way how to do it. I'm totally fine with ending this. So um, let's bounce back. Charlie was apprehended on the night of the murders, of (gasps) course, because Terry was alive and told them that Charlie had killed his family. Yeah. So um, he was apprehended almost immediately. And inside of the house, they found Aaron Caffey. She was inside. And initially, they thought that she was a victim of kidnapping. They were like, they went in, they murdered this whole family, and Charlie kidnapped Aaron because he wanted to be with her. Yeah. So that's what they thought initially. She claimed she woke up in a house full of smoke and there were two men with swords there and they gave her uh, something to drink and then she didn't remember anything else. Two men with swords. This is her story. Okay. (laughs) She got that from the Bible? (laughs) Well... As soon as Charlie learned that Terry had survived the attack, he began talking and he said that Aaron had called him the day before and in quotes, still pretty pissed off about her parents telling us we could not see each other. So once again, she told him that she wanted them dead and Charlie had urged her to just run away. But Aaron said, no, kill them. (gasps) So around fuck? around I, one, I can't, I can't even get someone to like give me a time and a place and to this, like meet the, for yeah. dinner. And like, this fucking bitch oh, can get p- someone to commit a felony. Well, for hold her. on, because and some around one thirty, <laughs> <need> my game. <laughs> around <laughs> one thirty in the morning, Charlie picked up his friends Charles Wade. So Charlie and Charles. Um, Charles charge. needed money, and Aaron had promised him the two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Like I get it. As a teenager, you're like. $2,000. But as an adult, $2,000 ain't shit. Don't murder anybody for $2,000 fucking dollars. Mm, right. I mean, no. don't do it at all. But I don't think I'd murder somebody for $200,000. Yeah. I mean, don't do it. But so Aaron, I said I don't think. I mean that I you won't. Know. You, you know. know. I think yeah. you know. I, I think we know. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron had promised him the $2,000 that she knew her parents kept in their lockbox in the home, which she knew the combination to. So Charles's girlfriend was a high school senior named Bobby Johnson, and she insisted on coming along that night at around 1.30 Ugh, in the morning. Bobby, why do you always have to go? Bobby, like, go? you don't need to be fucking nosy. Ugh. Maybe just sit this one out. Yeah. I, I know she wishes Bobby, she'd done that go now. go home and watch Bachelor. I know she wishes she'd done that now. So she wasn't initially aware of the plan, but... They brought her along because she insisted on going. Mm -hmm. When they first arrived to Aaron's house, the dog was barking so loudly that it scared them away and they left only to have Aaron call Charlie 
several times, insisting that they come back and she would keep the dog quiet. So they go back. That's breaking phone curfew for sure. For yeah. sure. One thirty in the morning. They go back, they pick up Aaron, and they drive around for about an hour. During this time, Charlie is trying to convince Aaron that they should just run away together. But she was emphatic that she wanted her parents dead. Damn, girl. Finally, they turned around to go back towards the cafe home and park down the road. And it was agreed that Charlie would kill Aaron's parents and Charles Wade would take care of the boys. <gasps> so no Why witnesses would die? be left behind. Oh. So Charlie, he when he first met Aaron, he had just come back from boot camp from the Army Reserves. He was fully intending on joining the Army. And this is what he said. He said, um, I ain't got no conscience. I joined the Army to do whatever needed to be done without thinking. As for her parents, I intended to kill them because I thought I was in love. Mm. So Charlie and Charles enter the home with a twenty two caliber pistol and... Two samurai swords, which is the oh. most teenage thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. The most also Midwest teenage like boy thing the ever. The very best way to lie is when it has a kernel of truth to it. Right. Well, that's what men, she, yeah, that's exactly what she said. Swords. Two men with swords came into my house because yep. she knew that. Yeah. So huh. they went into Terry and Penny's room first where Charlie fired his gun until it jammed, and then he handed his gun over to Charles Wade, who fixed the gun and then shot twice more. And then, trigger warning, he cut Penny's throat with the samurai sword to make sure she was dead. Why they didn't do anything to Terry, I don't know. Maybe because he wasn't moving or something. I'm not sure. So the boys had woken up because of the sounds of gunfire, and they locked themselves in Aaron's room. And Charlie claims that he didn't want to kill the boys, but Wade said, get the kids because little ones talk. So they didn't see anything. They wouldn't have known. They wouldn't have known. They wouldn't. They were upstairs. So Matthew Bubba tried to fight. He kicks them several times. And so um, Wade shot him in the face. Um, And then Wade stabbed the younger one, Tyler, several times. So they grab a suitcase that Aaron had packed earlier that night full of her belongings and um, the lockbox and the contents from Terry and Penny's wallets, and they set the house on fire. When they return to the car, Aaron smiles and says, I'm glad it's over. They Oof. they open wow. the lockbox with the combination that Aaron gave them, and they total what they got from the lockbox and both of the wallets, and it comes out to $375. Oh. That's how much money they get from this. Wow. They drove around for a while before Wade returns Aaron and Charlie back to his trailer where Aaron and Charlie have sex. Oh. And then the next day, they apprehend (coughs) Wade, who showed no remorse uh, as he detailed killing the boys and said that when they returned to the cars after the killing, Aaron said, holy shit, that was awesome. They arrested Aaron. Well, so Aaron had gone to the hospital. She went to the hospital. She got checked out. Everyone is being very sympathetic. You just lost your whole family, essentially, except for your dad. They don't think she had anything to do with it at this point. So everyone's being super, super sympathetic. Mm. They let her leave with police escort with her grandparents, her mother's parents, back to her grandparents' home. The Patrol officer who's following her gets a phone call and is like, you need to arrest Aaron right now. And she's like, right now? And they're like, right now. So they pull them over. They pull the grandparents over. (gasps) And in front of her grandparents, they say, you're arrested in connection with the murders of your family. Oh, and her grandmother is like, were you involved in this? And she's (gasps) crying. And she's like, no, I wasn't involved in it. So, Yes. So less than 24 hours after the murders, Wade, Johnson, Charlie, and Aaron were all in custody. So Bobby should have fucking stayed home because just being present, Mm -hmm. she's in custody now. Yeah. So Fuck you, Bobby. Yep. After suffering from a broken nose, two fractured cheekbones, and minor nerve damage in his right arm, after five bullet wounds and climbing through the window of a burning building and crawling... For 500 yards. That's all he got, which is insanely amazing. That, like, that's, wow. that's all the damage. He was discharged from the hospital just a couple of days later. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it was amazing. Wow. So he, of and course. How many times did 50 Cent get shot? 
<laughs> a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Many times. Yeah. 50. So, fitty. Um, so he fell into a major depression, of course. He was staying at his sister's house. He fell into a major depression. He considered going back to the land and killing himself where his family had died. He was just like, I don't want to live anymore. You have a lot, I think, to sift through oh when God. like, your daughter tries to orchestrate. Mm-hmm. Your, I mean, basically does orchestrate like a complete familiar side, you know? Oh, right. Like, I mean, and you can see the trauma here because he goes back, he starts like sifting through the rubble and like pulling things out. And he's talking about like, I would, <laughs> you know, pull out a Hot Wheels car that like was Aww. my kids, you know, cause like this, this place is like burned to the ground. So he's like dealing with a lot of PTSD, mm. but can you imagine just for a second, like your whole family's gone. The only person who's left is your daughter who's implicated in these murders he didn't know how to process it. So twice a week, he would go and visit her in prison. He was not allowed to talk to her about... What? He wasn't allowed to ask her questions right. about like what happened. Whoa. She couldn't tell him. But he would go twice a week. And he said that he found the visits agonizing, but felt the need to be in the presence of his only living child. Oh, God, it's God. so hard. It's hard. I mean, how do you even come to terms with that? And so he couldn't ask her about the crime. So he asked her... Um, were, were your mother and I good parents? Oh. And she said, yes, I couldn't have asked for a better mom and dad. Mm. But yet. But yet. But yet. So the court mandated a psych eval and it failed to find anything mentally wrong with her. Um, and the phone records indicated that Aaron had called Charlie a total of 13 times that night between 1146 p.m. and 158 a.m. Um, the prosecutors decide to ask the judge to certify Aaron as an adult so that she can receive the maximum possible sentence, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Even certified juveniles cannot receive life the death penalty. Oh, they just it. can't receive the death penalty. They can receive life sure. in prison. I see. Yeah. Um, so a detective had to sit down with Terry and discuss uh, discuss all this with him, present all the evidence to him, everything. And so the detective said, I brought all of the relevant documents and pictures and we went through everything. I showed him photos of the suitcase that Aaron had packed and the burnt out lockbox that was open to the combination that she had given Charlie. I showed him the statement that a friend of hers had given to investigators about how Aaron had wanted them to be killed. I told him about her and Charlie having sex afterwards, which was by far the hardest thing to have to tell him Ooh. which i'm like that's the hardest thing that they had sex that is pretty fucking rough. i mean it's real fucked no, up no, no. but i'm like they but killed like, your whole family but no yeah. no no it's not this is what it is it's like they it's don't the, care it's the killing of the whole family and then the callousness to think nothing of it so you're like right you're not fuck. no remorse Re zero completely remorse. remorseless okay that's, fair fair enough because i read that and i was that just like is rough Okay. Yeah, to me, I, that's that fair. is the toughest part. Like, like yes, you cared you so little that you went did this, but now you don't even have any remorse to the after fact to where you're like looking at this like, I just killed my fucking f like you're not panicked, you're not freaking no, out. No, she seems happy. You're like, let's fuck. Yeah, turned wow, on by wow. this situation. Yeah, that's true. Very that's true. Socio path shit right there so even after knowing all of that terry continued to stand by his daughter in court so in court whenever she was facing the judge and had to stand he would go stand with her and hold her hand no like i mean in court. there's there's mm. some things you you literally just cannot i think as a human with. being yeah he just couldn't you deal just with couldn't. the fact that he lost the rest of his family it's and i think so he's hard. putting up weird mental blockers yeah. to yeah. deal with it yeah because it gets worse. You're giving me that face. It gets, it gets so worse. So much worse. So much worse. Um, and he also advocated that the others involved not receive the death penalty. He said, my heart tells me that there have been enough deaths. Uh, he wrote this in a letter to the district attorney. I want them in this lifetime to have the chance for remorse and to come to a place of repentance for what they have done. Killing them will not bring my family back. Mm. So he asked that Charlie Wilkinson and Charles Wade receive sentences of life in prison without parole. And after consulting, and this is Texas. You're no better murder wow. you fucking any. They, they mean not murder, but they will yeah. put you to death for anything. Was, mm -hmm. was um, that comedian? He's like, bye bye, dum dum. That's Tom Zagura. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, we don't care. Bye in bye, Texas. Dum -dum. Um, after consulting with the attorney general's office, um, his, his honors were uh, 
his wishes were honored and they offered them a plea deal. And in November, both of the men pleaded guilty to three counts of capital murder. Once a month, Terry makes the three hour trip to Gatesville where Aaron is incarcerated. Terry. At his urging, she received a lesser sentence than life without parole. Fuck he bitch. wanted to make sure that she had something to live for. No. That's what he said. And so Aaron she accepted. Doesn't. I mean, Aaron accepted a plea deal, two life sentences to be served concurrently, plus an additional 25 years. Because two life sentences to be served concurrently, that can mean anything depending on your state. You could be out when, you know, yeah. at whatever time. Yeah. Um, so this ensures that with good behavior, she will be eligible eligible for parole when she is 59 years old. She'll be able to get out of jail. So Terry has chosen to accept the story. So after all of this went down, I he no was... No words for this bitch. He was mm-hmm. able to talk to her about the case afterwards. Because oh, once, the, right. once it's over. he was like, he's like, I want to know what happened. Please talk to me. He chose to accept the story she gave him. He says this, and this is where he told this phenomenal story. He literally story. says, I chose to accept. <sighs> he told this phenomenal story in the first thing that I saw, where I was like, he has this incredible story of survival. And then at the end of it, I always end up feeling kind of the same way, where I'm like, I feel so sorry for this man, because of course he's choosing this because of the situation he's in. But I'm also like, there is some deep, deep-seated denial here. Yeah. Because he has chosen to accept the story she provided him, which was that she was planning on running away that night, but then she changed her mind. The phone calls in the phone records, she told her father, were to dissuade Charlie from coming at all. Mm -hmm. It was Charlie who wanted the family dead. And when he came to the house, she had been powerless to stop him. And then I don't believe I don't believe it either. And then he said, I think she thought Charlie was just blowing smoke. I don't think she actually thought he would go through with it. I know my daughter. She cried one time when we were in my truck and I ran over a squirrel. She's tender hearted. No kid's an angel, but I know sh- what she's capable of. And he I know she's so not blind. capable of murder. He's oh, so blind. God. Aaron then told another. that's all he's got. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all he's oh. got. So he's clinging to it. He did get remarried to a woman who has two sons. So, you know, he's starting over. But like this is his fa- like he's choosing to. To believe the best, Bless you know, his heart. so Aaron, but Aaron told a different story um, to a mental health counselor who was set to evaluate her for her defense. And when she spoke to this counselor, Aaron insisted that Charlie had a volatile temp, a volatile temper. He had killed her family after she had broken up with him and then framed her. Um, and then this counselor says, I have worked with some good liars, but Aaron is one of the best. He has 19 years experience counseling juvenile offenders. And he said, she seemed totally sincere and genuine. And I would have put my license on the line to say that she was telling me the truth. She spoke with tears in her eyes, quote, God will save me. He knows I'm innocent. I cried every time I left her jail cell. Wow. This is what I had to say because wow. I fucking made a comment earlier. It says the best lies have a kernel of truth in it. And I will say that the stricter the parents, the better the liar. Mm. No, I would say so. They, they I prepped agree. her. They've been they prepped practicing her their whole this. life. Yeah, she, she the was prepped for this. stricter the parents, the and better the liar. While and we're saying a grain of truth, I won't say that she's not completely unreligious. And I will say that she probably does believe some of this shit that she's saying. Yep. Like, wow. I don't think she thinks she's totally lying. Um, but I'll get, I did watch some videos of her and I'll get to that at the end. Oh, of this. So shit. Um, Ugh, hurry up. I want to hear that. I'm sorry. I'm going. <laughs> um, all three of the other uh, defendants. So everyone else, Bobby, Charlie and Charles, they all, when independently interviewed, gave the same account mm-hmm. that Charlie constantly was like, let's just leave. I don't want to do let's this. Let's run away. We don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. And Aaron constantly was like, we're going to do it. Like, um, Bobby says that Charlie kept saying, are you sure you want to do this? And she said, why are you asking me this? If you love me, you'll do it. Wow. So um, 
she also says that Aaron seemed elated after the killings and said that she was free, that she had wanted to actually get out of the car and make sure that everybody was dead and that it was Aaron who insisted that her brothers were killed. Um, according to both Johnson and Wade, they both said that it was Aaron who wanted that because the boys, one, they picked on her and two, she didn't want them to be in foster care. That's what she said. So oh just God. fucking kill them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, Wade says, when we pulled away from the house, she was happier than a kid on Christmas morning. Fuck. When Charlie was interviewed from his new home in the Polunsky unit in Livingston Maximum Security Prison sometime later, he said, I would have done anything for her. She was very smart, very caring. I don't know why she wanted it done, why it had to be like that, but she was a very nice person. <laughs> When he learned that Aaron had previously asked another boyfriend, the guy she had been caught making out with behind the church, no. to kill her parents no. almost a year previous. No, 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 no. Charlie Girl, girlfriend said, had it. Mm-hmm. She, she wanted this done. Up. She wanted, she this wanted done. it done. Hell or high water. However it happened. And Damn. so Char- Charlie said when he found that out, that it made me question a lot of things. I'll oh, really? Be, I'll now? bet it did. Just now? <laughs> After months of pushing me and convincing me and all this, I got to thinking that maybe all I was was just a tool. When asked if he still loved her, he said, once you love somebody, you can't quit. You always will. Wow. After he's in fucking jail for the rest of wow. his life, that's what he says about wow. her. And so I Yikes. know this. I know after this is, what he knows now, this is not the most reliable source, of course. And I have my issues with him. But Doctor Phil, uh, did, uh. He, no, he, <laughs> but he visited. This is what comes up on on YouTube. Like he visited her in prison. Really? He presented her with all the evidence. He tried to get her to crack. <gasps> and. I appreciate with what this psychologist, this counselor in prison says about her being an incredible liar. But I will say me watching her. Yeah. Convinced. It, no. Oh, no. Not convinced. Like to me, it felt like somebody who was fake crying because what he did. It and was I, phony and as I fuck. do think and to me, this is trauma porn and it's something that I don't I don't get on board with where yeah. he was to her reading off everything that happened to her family Uh, um, mm -mm. to her face just to like capture her reaction which I don't I don't like I don't like that it it grosses me out but because he did it and I did watch it her reaction was somebody who I felt like was like trying to cry yeah Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and maybe that's because she's desensitized to it because it's been so many years yeah but to me it felt very phony phony like very very fake um but yeah that's the story of aaron caffey damn well damn, <laughs> damn. Oh, six pages of notes i, I got it out i love it i had wow. not heard that story so well done thank you i haven't either yeah My yeah goodness. wow and it's relatively recent also too. though I'm yeah 10 years kind of interested in watching this dr phil thing i know i mean it's oh. because it's dr phil it's in clips so you can oh, watch yeah. like there's like four of them on youtube yeah so you can watch them and it's like he did that and then he has the dad in his studio and he's like playing the video for his dad and he's like <sighs> trying to convince the dad that like she's lying to you like clearly she's lying to you because Ooh. he still stands by her and he's like no i think she was manipulated i think charlie manipulated her you know like he stands but i also get it because i'm so traumatized yeah you lost your whole fucking family you were shot five times ptsd traumatized and this is all you have left and like you gotta believe in something you gotta believe in something and like you're wrong sir you absolutely are wrong she wanted she tried to kill you and your whole family but like I also can't fault him because I know you see what where he's coming you do? from. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't Hopefully know. I don't have to ever think about it. Hopefully. So. <laughs> I know. And for me, like, oh. I, I think I'm still, I, I'm still really mad at Dr. Phil for the cash me outside. 
Oh, no, no, you should be. <laughs> Gosh, you 100% outside. should be. Um, You should be mad at a lot of these daytime people who are making people famous who should not be famous. Yeah, like, it really, 100%. really pisses me off. Like, we should not be rewarding bad behavior. Anthony made me listen to Bad Baby, which uh, she is. What's that? She, that, the Catch Me Outside the Catch girl, me that's outside her rap is, like, name. famous now. Oh, She's like a that. rapper. And I was like, I don't like this. Please nope. turn this off. This is horrible. That's this a bad, bad idea. This is a bad idea. You know what's a good idea? <sighs> what? I want to shout out, since this is our one yes. year, I want to yes. shout out some of our Stan fans. Yes, yes. please. Yes. People who so, have been here since day one, motherfucker. So OGs. And it's, be- it's funny because you had mentioned a story earlier um, from a girl who has been Absolutely. a fan of ours since like the very fucking day one. beginning. And um, fuck it. I'm shouting her out. She doesn't give a shit. I know she doesn't because I know her. Her name's Michelle. We're shouting you out, girl. Thank you so much for being a listener for fucking ever. Um, Georgette. I, yes. Yeah. Shout out all of yours. Georgette. Yeah. Kylie. Who's yes. been like, honestly, since day one, mm-hmm. like OG fans. And yeah. so for our year anniversary, since you've been with us for a year. Fucking, Hi. Thanks. Hey, we love you. A year's we a couldn't commitment. Honestly, we couldn't do this without you guys. You've been shouting us out. You've been supporting us from the very beginning. And. We just so appreciate it. I am going to stand fan my girl Laura Lee, who I I lost touch with after we used to um, be camp counselors together when we were teenagers back in the fucking day. Yes. and she has been listening since day fucking one, and it has been great. She joined the Facebook group. Dude. She's just fucking amazing. I see her on there all the time. Me too. I know. I do too. And I'm just, I'm just so happy and to have been able to like rekindle and just be like, oh my God, what's up? Because it's literally like half a lifetime ago that we talked and just seeing like how beautiful her life is and just what an amazing woman that she has become and, and getting to reconnect has been amazing. And also I'm going to stand fan handyman. Stan, yes. fan, handyman. Yeah, I think that you that's know what? fair. We'll give sure. it a call. It's fair. Yeah. Handyman, yeah. shout out to yeah. you. Yeah. 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 He's listened since day one as well and has always been very supportive and he loves the podcast as well. So. And he has shouted us out to friends. He's, yeah. He has been fucking awesome about like, you know, like letting people know. Good yeah. call. Yeah. Good yeah. Call. yeah. Like Amazing that. call. Good. Yeah. I feel like I've got a lot of people and I don't want anyone to be offended by feeling like they're left out because I no, don't want to leave I anybody out. Do like a Stan fan thing Tammy. at the end. Yeah. Like every. <gasps> yeah. I, I actually don't even know if my mom listens, but, but, she, is um, a Patreon. but yeah. she is a patron and she supports me yeah. so much because she's uh, just the best. She's the Hi, best mommy. mommy. Um, but, you know, I will say Anthony listens every fucking okay. week. True. Oh my God! He so listens hot. every week, and he comes home with and like he feedback. Comments. He messages. Does he messages. He does. He's also a patron. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. He's in. He's in it. Fucking full force. So I have to shout him out. But Tony. I will, Tony. I will also shout Uncle Tony out Tony to Charlie. Um, <laughs> emergency contact to Charlie the cat. Um, so true. I will also shout out my my Missouri best friend Sienna. Yes. yes. Uh, she listens to both of my podcasts and texts me routinely Aww. about Aww. what she listens I to. So her. I know she listens. That's so awesome. amazing. Um, my old coworker Denise. Yeah. Same. She listens to both my podcasts. She's freaking so supportive and amazing. Um, and then I will say, just for all of us, our mutual friends, I know that Amy of listens course. Matt all the does. time. Mackenzie, Mackenzie. listens. Um, and it is, I understand that it feels so, um, it doesn't feel like an important thing to you guys maybe you listen just because it's fun or like whatever and you don't really think about the impact that it has on us but it actually has quite a large impact on us it's really important to us and we appreciate it so fucking much yeah like so much that you guys find us entertaining enough to even want because listen just because we're your friends doesn't yeah. mean that you would find us entertaining enough to want to cook you know that's so well, true and for for all the new friends that i've made in this past year because it, it is like you guys have been such a Including part of my Mandy, man my healing process you know through this whole thing like getting 
getting to do this podcast and and finding out like oh, okay like dating sucks it's not just me you yes. know it's been like such a great Eye healing opening. thing yeah and getting to meet people like um sarah french or leah the yes. girl that oh, just oh moved my god, out leah. here yes and, like, we can't leave you out leah oh my god thank you thank you <laughs> like all these like amazing new people that have entered our life and our group and have shared their own stories and have shared themselves with strangers pretty much and have joined in with laughs and and fun and amazing support and have um, opened up conversations mm-hmm. on our Facebook group. I mean, like, we've had some, like, actually kind of deep conversations on our yeah. Facebook group. Yeah. And that's awesome. Like, yeah. I think it's been so wonderful and fulfilling. And so I'm rewarding. And I'm not going to whine cry. Yeah. But I just... No, we're, definitely we're, not. I'm we're keeping that very deep So wallow get, it Getting in. a little emotional. <laughs> but I, I just, I I'm think, so I happy think we, and I'm excited. I think we stand a fan every week yeah, now. Yeah. I think we stand a it. fan every week. I know because um, I literally just want to shout them all out. I right want to shout them all out. I know and I feel out. like, so if we feel it, like, if, if we you feel like we left you out, we will we are, get we're to you. Getting, we're getting there because we, we see you, you make our days so much brighter when you post something on Facebook or when you reach out. Um, we see you and, we love you and thank you so much. Um, it's myworstatepodcast.com. You can reach us on there. Um, happy one year anniversary, everybody. Yes. And looking Cheers. very much yeah. forward to the next one. So thank you so much for listening. Cheers. Cheers.